Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today, Monday, November 4th, 2019, Adobe updated Lightroom Classic from version 8.4.1 to version 9. In this video, I'm going to talk about the few things that are updated in this version. One of them, kind of something neat, I guess. They updated the panorama feature, introducing Content Aware Fill. In this video, I'll talk about that and I'll show you how it works. As I mentioned at the top today, Adobe updated Lightroom Classic from version 8.4.1 to version 9. If your Lightroom Classic didn't update automatically, what I suggest you do is open up the Creative Cloud app. Over on the left-hand panel, second item from the bottom is updates. Click on that and hopefully the update will be there and you could update it directly from your Creative Cloud app. If it's not there, if it's still showing there's no update available, log out or sign out of Creative Cloud and then sign back in. That's what I had to do on both of my computers that I use Lightroom Classic on to get Adobe to give me the update today. So to do that, over here on the right-hand side, there should be a little icon here that is designated you. Click on that and sign out. And then once you sign out, you'll be able to sign back in and hopefully those updates will be there for all the Adobe product that needs updating, including Lightroom Classic. Once you do the update I'll, and you open Lightroom, it's going to do an upgrade to your Lightroom catalog. You may want to back up your Lightroom catalog files before you allow it to do that upgrade. It took less than a minute. It didn't seem to be that significant of a thing, but it's always better safe than sorry, or to better to be safe than sorry. Now, once you finally get into Lightroom version 9, Lightroom Classic version 9, you're going to find that there's not a lot of update. Usually with Adobe, at least, when they go in a whole number update from 6 to 7 or 7 to 8, there's something significant. Well, from 8 to 9, there really isn't a lot here. It has the, the normal bug fixes, new camera and lens profiles, and it has like three kind of new things, and I wouldn't call them significant, and I'm going to mention two of them, and I'm going to go in a little more depth on the third thing. Now, one of the things that is new in Lightroom Classic version 9 is the ability to search for a color label that is in a collection or a folder. Now, you may remember just a couple updates ago, we uh, attained the ability to give a collection a color label or to give a folder a color label. Well, we would be able to search, but we only could search for color label in general, meaning we couldn't search for the specific red color label or the specific yellow color label. Instead, we could just search for color labels and it would give us all the folders or collections that had any color label on it. Now, you get to search for the specific color label. So, I don't have any color labels, I don't utilize them, but if you're in, let's say, collections, if you go over here on the search bar, click on this little magnifying glass, you could see color labels. And now, you could search for any of those individual color labels. Similarly, for the folders, go up to the search bar, click on that little magnifying glass, go down to color labels, and you could search for all those individual color labels. All right, whoop de doo <laughs> The next thing I think is a little more useful, at least for most people. If you're going to export an image, in the past you exported one image. Um, now you could take that same image and you could export it to different sizes or different specs. Let me bring up the export dialogs and try to better explain this. So let's say I just for the sake of argument want to export this image. Uh, now you'll notice on the left hand side where you have these export presets. Now these aren't develop presets. They're not presets you use to process an image. They're just different presets you could have created that allow you to export any image in different specs, different sizes, different resolutions, different places on your computer, and so on. But you'll notice now there's little like checkboxes next to them. Now I have some user presets I created. Uh, let's say that I want to export this image for use on my imbuffalo.us website. That's the website I have for my Buffalo street photography. If I want to, I, I export images 
to a very specific spec for that web website, a very specific resolution and a very specific size. Well, I just check this and it will export this image to those specs. But let's say I also want to post this image to Instagram. I could check there. Now it'll do two exports of the same image, one that has the specs for my imbuffalo.us website and the other one will have the specs for Instagram. Well, what if I want to do a third or a fourth or a fifth? You could do that as well. Let's say I just want a one for my email. I'm going to email it to someone. I could click that as well. So you could check these boxes and it will do multiple exports of the same images or same image uh, with different specs, different sizes, different export places, wherever you may put them on your computer and so on. Whatever your preset designates, that's what will happen. So that, I guess, is a little more useful. I think I could see I would use that at least. Now, the next thing is maybe what's getting the most buzz, but it really is still isn't that big of a deal. Uh, they kind of introduced uh, Content-Aware Fill in Lightroom, which is a thing that was always in Photoshop, uh, meaning if you had an area of an image or you were creating a montage or something and you had part of the image that was blank, you could let Photoshop kind of fill that in it would like study the pixels around it and it would really usually do a pretty good job of filling it in so it looks real like you could you know make it look like there was really something there when there wasn't uh, artificial intelligence right well they've extended that into Lightroom but in a very limited way only in the panorama you may know if you create a panorama in any program uh, you'll often get all these blank pixels and you have to crop out the blank pixels. Well, now you could use the content aware capabilities that are now in Lightroom in the panorama feature to fill in those blank pixels. And we're going to do it here and it's going to be a huge panorama. So I should have a lot of blank pixels. As you can see, I have eight images and I didn't do any processing on them. So they look pretty bland. They're raw files. So I'm going to click on the first one and I'm going to hold my command key and or I'm sorry, the shift key and click on the last one. So they're all selected. And then I'm just going to right click on any of them. And I'm going to go up to photo merge panorama. Now nothing's changed. This is how you create a panorama in Lightroom all the time. Now you could see that it has these blank pixels here. Now in the good old days, you had this boundary warp uh, slider. You could move that and it could kind of stretch out your image to fill in those blank pixels. And it usually did a pretty good job. You also could just go to auto crop and it will just crop away those blank pixels. That was there a long time. But now they have fill edges and this is the content aware fill that I'm talking about. This is new. So if you click on that, you'll see it will fill in those edges um, with pixels that it just pulled out of the air. It just made them up. So um, again, it's kind of bringing some of that um, technology that was found in Photoshop into Lightroom and they do it very limited way. In my opinion, now this is purely my opinion, they're going to really have to really up their game when it comes to AI uh, because uh, applications like Luminar and On One Photo Raw are really embracing AI and they're really bringing it into their applications that compete directly with Lightroom. And I think Adobe is going to have to really up their game when it comes to AI. Also, uh, with you'll see I'll be doing a video in the near future talking about the new line of Intel uh, processors, their um, Series 10 core processors that have AI built in and they have a toolkit available that will allow a software developer to really take advantage of these AI capabilities that are built in to the processor. So it's going to be a lot easier for other software manufacturers to come up with AI applications that will work with photo processing and video processing for that matter. So with that said, that's just my opinion. Adobe's really gonna have to up their game. So we have this for now. We're gonna click merge. Sorry about that long diatribe, but I just wanted to mention that. So now you can see over here in the uh, progress bar, it's creating our panorama. And once it creates the panorama, I have these images in a collection. So it's just gonna add them uh, to the collection. And then I could process this from that point on. Now the good thing 
about Lightroom, when it creates a panorama or an HDR image, it actually creates a raw file. Unlike many other applications that create TIFF files from your images, this will take your raw files, merge them into a panorama or into an HDR, and create a, another raw file. So that, I think, is a really great advantage uh, to Lightroom. Okay, just finished up. It's over here. And there's our image there. And as I mentioned, that's a raw file, so there's no processing done. I had the option, you may have noticed, to do an auto tone adjustment. What it would have done, it would have just pressed that button and did an auto tone adjustment, uh, which I don't like auto tone. I like to process it myself. So um, we'll undo that. So I could come in here now and, and process this as I would normally process an image. And I don't know if you want to watch me process this, but if you don't, you could tune out because I really don't have much more to say. Uh, that is pretty much the update that is in the latest version of Lightroom Classic. It's now Lightroom Classic version nine. And let's just call it a day on that. So that's it. That's that, uh, that update. As I mentioned, just my opinion, um, not that significant of an update. And um, I really think Adobe's going to have to up their game very, very soon because the competition is getting fierce. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.